All right, we're 15 now, so let's start. So today we're going to discuss about Louise Bennett, one of the most prominent poets of uh, Jamaica. And we'll see that how revolutionary her ideas were with respect to her national identity. So is this uh, visible to you, Louise Bennett? Yes, sir. Right. So we are starting with the introduction of Louise Bennett. So Louise Bennett uh, Coverley, or she's uh, known as Miss Lao, Miss Om, Miss Oj, or Miss MB. She was bo born on 7 September 1919, died on 26 July 2006. She was a Jamaican uh, poet, folklorist, writer, and educator, writing and performing her poems in Jamaican patois or Creole. Patois or Creole is a local dialect. Bennett worked to preserve the practice of presenting poetry, folk, folk songs, and stories in patois, national language, establishing the validity of local languages for literary expressions. So you see, uh, it reminds me of uh, Ngugi Wathiango, who abrogated the English language or who rejected using English language. And he preferred writing his local African languages in order to promote his culture. So similarly, this uh, Louise Bennett, Kavali, she used the local Creole or dialect in order to promote her own culture and identity. So we would see that largely it is driven um, from English language, but it evolved with the passage of time as a language. So it has made a Jamaican identity. So although she was good at uh, writing in English, but she did not prefer English as a medium of expression. Rather, she preferred her own local dialect. So uh, we have just talked that she used that dialect, dialect because uh, uh, she had a quest for Jamaican identity. And uh, in order to resolve this language problem, she uh, proposed or she forwarded a thesis that she, um, why to prefer Jamaican and why Jamaican language is a language the way English is a language. So what do I mean by this when I say English and Jamaica has similarities as a language? Both the languages are derived or derivatives. They have been derived from certain other languages. For example, English has got influence of Norman French, Greek or Latin right and it has uh, borrowed so many words from these languages and it, it it evolved as a language similarly jamaica has got influence of english and spanish because it remained a colony for four centuries first of spanish and then of great britain and largely it remained under the sway of great britain for three centuries almost Till it got its, its independent in independence in 1960s, uh, probably 1962 to be specific. And there was a question of identity then, that which language Jamaican should prefer. And Louise Bennett was of the view that Jamaican people should restore their identity through lo using the local dialect, because. In English schools, in English schools and uh, <clears throat> colleges or in, in, in uh, conventries, uh, the Jamaican people who were taught in standard English language were highly reprimanded for using the local dialects and they were considered donkeys. And such was the shame that was associated with their local dialects and culture. And the people started feeling 
inferior when they would speak in local dialects for that matter <clears throat> they preferred using standard english <coughs> excuse me so such was the context of uh, this uh, louis bennett's writing <coughs> and in this context although she was disregarded as a writer because she was writing in local dialect she was not considered a writer at all but she did not care for it she preferred using her local dialect in her writing in order to convey her message and in order to prevail a sense of national identity and today we are going to discuss uh, two of her poems in which she has given this importance of using the local dialect and she has given a ironic view of colonization and she has criticized the uh, british colonial policies that have left the jamaicans homeless or languageless or uh, for that matter economyless because they thrived the market of england in order to earn better future who would see and just i'm going to share a, a poem in which she has uh, laid emphasis on using the local dialect over english language takes me a minute to upload this all right <clears throat> this is a poem a dry food boy which gives the sense of uh, the importance of using a uh, local language to her writing dialect bennett is telling jamaicans that it is acceptable to speak this way not only does bennett make the point the dialect is not vulgar through the artistry that she produced in writing in this style but she also directly addressed the issue of language and how jamaicans should speak as the topic of some of her points for example dry foot boy shows the importance of bennett's essays on dialect and speaking in one's natural language by dramatizing the story of a boy returning from overseas the speaker in this poem is shocked that since this young man has gone overseas he has lost his Jama jamaican dialect and his accent so this is what happens in most of the cases when people leave their country in order to settle somewhere else they prefer talking in the foreign language and in this way they lose the contact with the local culture and language so this is a boy who pretends that he is unable to understand the local dialect but uh louis bennett or the speaker of the poem resonantly reminds him of his cultural roots so apparently you would see that the spellings are deviant forms a deviant from english language but because um jamaica has got a mixed identity why mixed identity because the many people in jamaica have been from south africa china and uh, from caribbean and uh, their mixed identity um also had a mixed language so uh, this language jamaican language has got a lot of influence from uh, english uh, because it was largely spoken that's why and the spelling that they took were largely deviant and you would see that the sounds and spellings are deviant but still we can understand uh, we can understand the message given to the jamaicans by this poem even if we are non native english speakers we still can make sense of her poems by giving them one or two readings 
you would see that uh, the spellings are quite uh, interesting for us because this is something new that we are coming across. And this is a language. She is trying to theorize that this creole or dialect is basically our national language. So we should prefer it using uh, over English language, right? So see. What wrong with Mary Dry Foot Boy? See the spelling of what and wrong with and Mary Dry Foot Boy spelling of boy. What wrong with Mary Dry Foot Boy? Them girl got him for mock. Means the girls are mocking him. And when we meet him tra night, it means and when we when I met him tonight. The boy give me a shock. The boy gave me a shock, it means. See the language. The spellings, the sounds, or the prepositions, or even the words like Tara night. It's not Tara night tonight, she wants to say. But in fact, she is using her local dialect. So in that dialect, they call it Tara night. So what wrong with Mary Dryfoot boy? Them girl got him for mock. And when we me meet him Tara night, the boy gave me a shock. So me start to feel sorry for him. So she says that she started feeling sorry for him. What for? The poor bad lucky soul. The poor bad lucky soul. See that? The poor. Instead of writing poor, you would say poor. The poor bad lucky soul. Me think him come a foreign land. I think that he has come from a foreign land. Come catch bad foreign color. See the spelling of color, see the spelling of catch. It means that uh, she says that she thinks that the lad has come from a foreign land and he has caught the foreign color. It means he has been influenced by the foreign culture and language. Me think him got a bad sore throat. You see that? The way we mock, uh, for example, the people who are non-natives and somebody speaks with good uh, articulation and he tries to focus much on place of articulation and uh, it appears that he has got some problem with his throat. So she is ironically saying that she thinks that he has got some bad sore throat. She has a problem with his throat. But as him chat chat going, it means that uh, the way he speaks, me find out so is foreign tongue. I come to know when he speaks, I come to know, means the poet comes to know. She comes to know that he is speaking some foreign language. He is speaking some foreign language. The boy was not put on. The boy was a put on. It means that the boy felt it strange. For me, notice that him answer to nearly all me say. It means I was shocked. She says that I was shocked when I answered, when uh, I noticed the answers of that boy. And what was the answer? Was actually what, oh dear, these are some of the words, English words that the boy spoke. Actually, what, oh dear, and all them sitting there means these were the words that he spoke. Same time, me lost my temper. It means that at the same time, and at that moment, the poet or the speaker loses his temper or her temper. Same time, me lost my temper and me holler, it means I speak. Boy, cry out. Boy, cry out. Cry out. Cry out. Hmm? It means cry out. Boy, cry out. Do you see that how she pronounced get out? Cry out. No chat to me with no heart, kitata, and you mouth. Can you tell me oh, what may be the meaning of this uh, line? No chat with me 
नो हॉट पिता था एना यो माउट एनी वन गिवेट डोंट टॉक टू मी बैडली एंड शट योर माउथ शट योर माउथ नो नो व्हाट वर्ड्स आर दीज भाई बेसिकली कैन यू कैन यू टेल व्हाट वर्ड्स आर दीज विद विद send us pitata i don't get uh -huh. let, let's let's try to get it let's try to get it i'm just trying to getting it like no chat to me with no hot potato in your mouth <laughs> <laughs> right okay, so it means that when he is speaking it appears that he has got some hot potato in his in his mouth and is speaking like that you would see that when somebody is uh, uttering um or when he is somebody is using the perfect place of articulation while speaking english we make fun at times that how he is speaking probably has got something in his mouth right for example when we say top hot so it appears that we have some orange stuffed in our mouth like hot we are uttering something from our directly from our vocal cord so no chat to me with no hot potato in your mouth so she simply asks that boy to leave get out no chat to me with that hot potato in your mouth means talk to me in local dialect this is how this local dialect is important to to louis bennet or the speaker of this thing <clears throat> him turn up like him stunted he turn up means he stand up he turn up like me stunted like him stunted then hear him no so now he is replying how silly i don't think that i really understand you actually so these are the words uttered by that boy he is asking or he is replying that girl or that speaker that he is unable to understand what she is saying to him so what she says or the speaker says me say you understand me yeah no youth name kajo scoop your name was this your name was kajo scoop always visit nana kitchen and go laugh fi kongu soup so it means that your name was this and you used to visit nana kitchen is a name of place where he would take the gangu soup so <clears throat> this is quite interesting so basically you know see the point that uh, louis bennet wants to make in this poem is that the importance of dialect that somebody when he goes out he becomes ambivalent he he loses his contact with the local culture or language and she is of the view that one should not lose the local contact or one should value his own assets or cultural assets and language is one of those assets so this jamaican identity is dependent upon the language that it uses it has got a national language so this dialect or creole is our national language according to uh, louis bennet and she prefers using this dialect although she was disregarded for using this non standard english and she was disregarded as a writer and nobody considered her a big writer but even then she preferred using the dialect and one day rather this day we even the non native speakers sitting in the subcontinent are reading or reciting this poem and we are trying to decode what she has said and we are understanding what she has said right so this is the power of writing or this is the power of writing in local language that uh, she has proved over the passage of time although she was uh, living in the previous century but still she has made her thesis proven that the national or the local language or the dialect is your identity and now this identity is of louise bennet's identity that she is using the local dialect in order to propagate her message right so this is how she is uh, of the view that 
one should project his uh, nationality or national ideology through language. So one more point that we would uh, discuss in this session is colonization in reverse, in which he has ironically depicted the after effects of colonization on Jamaican society. And after that, uh, we'll have a short uh, question and answer session in which we would, we would discuss both the points with reference to language appropriation and appropriation, of course, because he is uh, following the ballad form of uh, British writing, but still she is preferring her local dialect in her writing. All right. Sir, what is the name of this poem? A dry foot boy. A dry foot boy. All right, all right, all right, where are we? Hmm. Colonization in reverse. This is the next point that we are going to discuss. What, sir? Colonization in reverse. Can you see on the on the window? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is in front of yes, you. Yes, sir. Colonization in reverse. So reversing the colonization, you know, colonization was the process by the Great Britain or the empire in order to subjugate the countries or the colonies in order to extract their wealth or riches. So Jamaica remained a colony of Great Britain for almost three centuries and uh, one century under Spanish rule. So Jamaican identity was uh, badly marred by the colonial discourses so was the language because they had a mixed identity because the people living in Jamaica were from South Africa, from Caribbean and from uh, China to some extent. So they had a mixed identity. So the language they developed was a Creole language or a dialect was their, their dialect was Creole. So uh, this colonization or the colonial policies in Jamaica marred the local cultural uh, values, uh, not only local cultural and language values, but also economic, uh, economic standards. So we would see that how she is ironically uh, bringing in a most uh, a crucial, a critical theme of colonization in this point, colonization in reverse. What a joyful news, Miss Matty. You would see that the spellings are deviant the way we had the previous poem. Uh, uh, boy, oh, what was the boy? What was the name of the poem that we have just discussed? A dry uh, foot boy. A dry, a dry foot boy. boy. Yes, a dry foot boy. So uh, we would see that the pattern is same, the spellings are same, or the sounds are same. We would see that how she is spelling after the sounds that she uttered. What a joyful news, Miss Matty. Miss Matty is an English character. She has brought in. So what a joyful news, Miss Matty. I feel like me heart going burst. She feels that her heart is going to burst. Jamaica people colonizing England in reverse. Well, it is the turn of Jamaican people now to colonize England. So how can people from Jamaica or Jamaican people colonize England. So this is quite unbelievable. But apparently, she thinks that she is going to make a point. By the hundred, by the thousand, from country and from town, by the shipload and by the plane load, Jamaica in England bound them a poor out of Jamaica. Everybody, future plane, is forget a big time job and settle in the motherland. You see, <clears throat> she's saying that Jamaica is being evacuated. People are leaving Jamaica. And what is the reason of their leaving Jamaica? To have a better future. To have a better job. And settle in the motherland. This is also ironic. Now, this motherland has been responsible for this economic decline or downfall of Jamaica. Because it looted it for three centuries. 
and now people are helpless to go to other country and they're preferring England of course to earn their livelihood or to earn their bread and butter so ironically she is showing a mirror to the Great Britain that the people from America or Jamaica they are coming to England in order to settle in order to have a good job in order to have a better future uh, in fact between the lines she wants to say that why ever they want to settle in their motherland why not they prefer in the island or the, in Jamaica it is because the cruel or the economic bad economic policies of the colonial or the colonizers or the empire so what an island what a people man and woman old and young just pack them bag and baggage and turn history upside down means what are these people they're just stuffing the things with them and they are just coming here and turning history upside down what was the history Jamaica was once colonized and now Jamaican are going to colonize England they're turning history upside down of course she is ironic it is not possible it is not possible at this moment because Jamaica does not have that strength to colonize England but she is making a point or she is reminding Miss Metty a colonial representative or a national a British national that what havoc was let loose by that great empire on an island Jamaica and these are the after effects of that uh, bad colonial policy that the people from Jamaica are helpless to leave their own motherland or their country in order to earn their bread and butter in England and what would be the effect of that uh, you know thing on the people Sir, this can also happen, as all the Jamaicans who were going to England for their bread and butter, so there will be so many Jamaicans and England will be so low that the Jamaicans will overcome England. So this can also happen. This can also happen. This can also happen. Okay. That may be one point that you have just described the people. This is what exactly happened when the companies from the Great Britain went to Jamaica. This is exactly happened with the subcontinent where we are living at the moment that our company came in order to have a trade in a have a, in order to have a bread and butter you know and then they took over but that company had a power that company had a backing of the great empire but this company that is coming from jamaica to england in order to earn their bread and butter they don't have a backing they don't have a big empire behind them right so this is not possible this is a kind of uh, next to impossible because it is apparently uh, the statistics uh, do not justify the point but it is ironic in a sense that she's saying that they are thriving the market the way uh, the way english people went to jamaica in order to earn their better similarly the jamaican people are coming to england in order to their better but, but the consequences would be different she's not talking about consequences she's talking about the similarities of the events that happened while the process of colonization in Jamaica and while at this point when, when the Jamaican people are coming to England in order to have better jobs. Does it make sense to you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now it makes sense, sir. अगर इस तरह देखें ना कि वो पावर में नहीं थे जमाइकन्स लोग तो वाकी में वो नहीं ओवरकम कर सकते इंग्लैंड को क्योंकि इंग्लैंड वाले ज़्यादा पाव में थे जब वो जमाइका आए it, it is very much similar that we say, we the subcontinental people say that we would go to England in order to colonize them. Now there are, of course, many like London, they, London is full of people from Asia, but they have not been able to colonize England because they don't have backing of an empire. So people going is a phenomena, but this bringing this into poetry on these lines, ironically, gives a great message that Jamaican people are not that for, for, forceful, that cruel, or that, uh, uh, you know, uh, corrupt who would loot and plunder your England, the way England did to Jamaican people. So this is otherwise. Some people don't like travel, but few show them loyalty 
although some of the people don't like to travel to england but still in order to show loyalty them all upon and chief fare to england agency they would go to england agency in order to have a fare uh, a cheap ticket from the agency and they would visit as a pilgrim as the pilgrimage um, you know visit their holy shrines these people are showing loyalty to english people and they would come to england in order to respect the queen or the motherland so this this is a for the ambivalent people or for the people who have dual standards or who still respect the british uh, rule or the the great britain right it is for those people because such kind of people are always there for example in our community we have some uh, people who have uh, uh, good words for the empire but there are people who resist but there are who show loyalty to the queen till this point so some people even if they don't like to travel but they want to show their loyalty to the motherland so for that reason they are they are getting the tickets from england agency and they are trying to make it to england and week by week them shipping off they are coming without any pause them countrymen like fire they are coming to this country as a fire for immigrants and populate the seat the seat of the empire so they want to emigrate this place and populate it and de seat it means that they they want to acquire this empire they would get this empire one day by their flux but sir uh, ye jo point hai they are going without any cause they are going where at england hmm. or at jamaica they are they don't have any point where sir ye jo aapne bhi bataya na point ki wo kisi maqsad ke bagair ja rahe the they are going without any cause where is so it ye... abhi sir aapne bola hai yes some people don't like travel they are going just with one cause and that cause is to show loyalty to their motherland okay sir right even if they don't want to have a job there or they don't want to settle there but still they are going in order to show their loyalty to the motherland when they are showing their loyalty how can they invade an empire or how can they replace the role of an empire with them so it is very difficult and week by week them shipping off them countrymen like fire we for immigrate and populate the seat of the empire so it means that they want to populate this region and finally or ultimately they want to take hold of the empire so this is quite ironic it is impossible the way i have already talked that basically uh louise bennett wants to make this point that england or the colonial policies have corrupted uh the jamaican to the core and it has crippled the economy of jamaican that people of jamaica are helpless to migrate to england in order to earn their bread and butter or in order to have a good job right so it has become imperative for every jamaican youth that he or she visits to england in order to get a good job because there is nothing in jamaica to support or accommodate those young people or those people who want to earn some bread and butter in their own country so this is quite ironic and who is responsible for these jamaican immigration of course the colonial the bad colonial economic policies because they have looted they have plundered everything from jamaica and now they have left them in limbo to meet their fate themselves but they are looking again for the great britain for their rescue some of them are there so she uh, louise bennett has uh, very uh, skillfully embedded the theme of colonization in this humorous poem it's quite humorous because how jamaica is going to invade empire this is a this is a question but she tries to maintain this poem uh, point 
that colonization or the bad colonial policies left Jamaica where it is at the moment. And it was the, uh, you know, responsibility of the Great Britain to maintain the Jamaican infrastructure also because it was due to the loot and plunder that they had, Jamaica fell to this level. And now people are helpless to leave their motherland, Jamaica, for the ancient motherland or the previous motherland, England. All right. So in, in both the poems, we see that uh, the poet, Louise Bennett, tries to maintain or make a Jamaican identity. One through language, second through themes. In the Dryfoot Boy, we come to know that she is emphasizing on the importance of using uh, uh, local dialect over English, and she uh, wants to get that person out, get out that person who is unable to use the local language because he does not have an identity, because he is speaking a foreign language. On the other hand, in this poem, Colonization in Reverse, we see that she is reminding Miss Matty, a representative of the English National, she is reminding her of a colonial disaster or a colonial, uh, a bad colonial policy in Jamaica that has made Jamaican people evacuate their own motherland for a motherland that was never there because it has looted and plundered in their region. Right? So such was the beauty of her writing in post-colonial context. Now, if you have any questions, you may ask. Sir, the Jamaicans have their own language that they only speak English and Spanish words. No, apparently we have just seen that uh, they have spelled the words according to their sounds because these are the derivatives because they have derived this language from English language and Spanish language, right? The way English has been derived from French, Latin, and Greek, this is, this is the point that uh, Louise Bennett makes. That similar, uh, both the languages have uh, equal status because uh, both the languages have the same past. When English has taken its words or borrowed words from Greek, Latin, and French, how it is superior and how Jamaican dialect or Creole inferior when both have the same background. One is branded as a language, another is branded as a Creole dialect. Why can't it be considered a language? This is the point that she wants to make through her writings. So Jamaican people do have this, mostly they, they, they speak English language, standard English, because most of the people are ambivalent the way we have uh, here English as a national language, but they, they do have their dialects and they are working on it. And you would uh, read uh, one of the articles of uh, Jamaica Kincaid, Kincaid in which she tells that how uh, their local dialects were associated with shame and denigration that the local people left their own language in order to speak the standard language. So this Creole or dialect is their language, Jamaican language. Okay, sir, thank you. Yeah. Anyone else wants to contribute or ask a question? No? Okay, then we are wrapping up today's session. And I hope that you have understood both the poems of Louise Bennett and the contribution of Louise Bennett towards forming the national identity for Jamaican people. And you would also be able to relate it with the um, theme of language abrogation. The way Nugugi Vathyango abrogated the use of English language, you, could, you are able to relate these poems with language appropriation and abrogation that we have discussed in our early classes, right? So um, I'm just leaving you for now. Take care, stay safe, stay blessed. Allah Hafiz.
اللہ حافظ سر تھینک یو سر اللہ حافظ سر تھینک یو سو مچ